I am Gayani Dialvis, a Sri Lankan, thoroughbred Sri Lankan who have gone to school in Sri Lanka, uh, who gone to university in Sri Lanka, and then working in Sri Lanka. Of course, I worked overseas also, but I am a truly a Sri Lankan product like all of you, right? I'm a truly a Sri Lankan product like all of you. But uh, anyway, you, you would be happy to see books behind me. So you must be thinking I read all of those books. Yes, I do read books. So books really gain you, give you knowledge. And that really helps you to understand how the world works. Think differently. Think critically. So very important. So I'm very thankful to uh, Hedway uh, for actually selecting this topic because this is a very important topic. Critical thinking and problem solving. We all know we are in a very sad situation in our country. We are in here because we don't know how to solve problems. Not only the politicians, everyone, we don't know really try to solve problems. So before we go into the way how to solve problems, let's start with the icebreaker. When you look at this picture, I'm showing you what is on the screen. There is a picture. I'm sure you must have seen this also before. But when you look at this picture, how many animals do you see? How many animals do you see in this picture? Note down on a piece of paper, how many animals do you see in this picture? There are loads, right? Just critically identify, carefully watch this picture, identify as many number of animals do you see in this? Now I'll show you the answer, then you will be, oh, you have 16 here. But I also have marked here a few of the ones that are difficult, right? See, did you all find, okay, very easy to find mouse, hen, crocodile, dolphin, fish, tortoise, elephant, of course, donkey, dog, snake, cat, mouse, but very difficult to find this, no? Swordfish, prawn, bird head part of that you know not fully then beaver difficult and mosquito here <laughs> you see this so i think this is this is very important why i asked you to do this exercise is that when you are looking at we, we come across a lot of problems in our life personally and also nowadays in the country also we go through experience a lot of problems okay so it's going to be very interesting in the next few slides to we have a lot of activities we have to learn a lot of things we have to learn a lot of theory we have to learn concepts so that it is going to be very easy so it's very important we all come across problems in our, in our lives we see problems all around us but the problem is not Many can solve problems, although it seems very obvious and simple. Some things are very simple problems. Some are very complex problems. But either way, you should have the ability to break complex problems, difficult problems into small chunks and Break those small, I mean, the, the small chunks that you have broken, just one by one, you see why these problems are happening. Critically look at this. Now see, when you, if you didn't look at this picture critically, in a very observant manner, carefully, not just looking at what is just easy to find, you found a lot of things that you couldn't find normally. But not many can find this. When I do this exercise, sometimes very rarely you get the 16 problems. So today what we are going to learn is we have three sessions. First session, we will understand what are the problems? How do you define the problem? How do you think, critically think about the problem when you like the picture that you did it, critically looking at, observantly looking at 
the problems because you need to think to solve problems, not just thinking, critically think. Go deep into the problem. So the first session we will look at the problem, how to identify the problem. To identify the problem, you need to critically in a deep manner think of the problem. Then the second session we will look at all problems have reasons why problems happen. So we will understand in the second session, what are the reasons for the problem? How do you find reason? There is a structured way to do that, not in a very haphazard manner. Once you do, uh, you know, identify the reasons for the problem, then what you need to do is in the third session, how do you find the root causes, the reasons we know now, the reasons, how do you solve the problems, the root causes, once you identify, how do you give creative solutions? Because you are looking at critically and you have to creatively give solutions. Identify creative ways. Now we lack creativity. We are very good at making memes in social media and you know, doing all that, but we don't use that creativity, do something for the country, for yourself, for us. Very rarely people will think like that. So we are going to, at the end of these three sessions, and finally we have a Q&A session, we will understand how do we solve problems, critically looking at it with creative. So I'm sure all of you are now, after your A-levels or O-levels or whatever, or waiting to follow some course or whatever your parents want you to do, become a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer or an IT person or an HR person, marketing, whatever. Or you want to, you have some ambition in life, so you're thinking what to do, right? Checking with people what should we do. Looking at whether I should start a business. Sometimes some young people start businesses on their own. That's very good. So a lot of things must be coming uh, thoughts are coming to your mind. And you are also thinking what to study? Where should I study? What are the most popular things that I should do, especially in a, con in a country where we have an issue these days? Or should I go overseas? And how to study also? That's very important. Because now we never thought we can work from home and study online. So this has opened a lot of opportunity for everyone now. Of course, you need a device to access, but there is so much opportunity you may not have seen before. And globally, you don't have to look at only local uh, programs because there are a lot of programs available online, which are called MOOC massively online open courses. So may very uh, top universities around the world are offering free courses online. So you don't need to sometimes pay for any of these things. They will offer free for you. So you should know where to go and do these things. So I will show you some of the examples. So if you want to develop anything for that matter, any skill, critical thinking or problem solving or leadership or team building or IT skills or special technical or whatever skills that you want to do, you can actually get into the online courses and do that. You only have to pay for some small fee for the uh, certificate if you want only. So very often, in this, uh, this, this cartoon is in Singhala, but I will explain. You know, our education system, I'm not criticizing, but I'm telling you because all of you have come through the edu current, our education system like me also. Our system is such that we want to, we want the teachers to spoon feed you. We have to tell everything to the student. And, you know, even for the exam, we will say, these are the questions that will come to the exam. You go for tuition classes, the tuition masters will say, these are the probable questions and you, everyone will go to those classes. If they say for maths, I am teaching to get 90 marks, so please come, everyone will come. But if there is a place who will say, I am going to teach you concept on maths so that you learn by yourself, the teacher who tell that you will not get many students because we like the easy way. 
we like to pass exam with probable questions, somebody giving, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that um, uh, question paper, model question paper, right? So we must come out of this. If you want to critically think and look at problems with a different mindset to solve problems, we must have the ability to think if we can't think, if somebody is thinking on your behalf, you will never be able to solve problems. So you have to be thinking by yourself, but you should be taught how to think. That's what I'm going to tell you today. If you, schools should tell students how to think, not give model question papers and say, these are the questions that will come for the exam. So what is important, unfortunately, our education system is like that. Rote learning, we have to always by heart, you know, you say katapadankarana. So you just by heart, remember, study, 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 and you know, just write whatever that is in the book. You don't think. If you can't think properly, I'm not saying not everybody. That is the how we have been taught. So when you are not taught to think, you find it very difficult to solve problems. So what I am going to tell you today is in this class, how can we think creatively? How can we think critically to solve problems? Day-to-day -day problems that you and I experience, personal life for you, professional life for you, or in the country for that matter, for anybody, you can teach other people. You can teach your parents, your sisters, siblings, all of that, brothers, to do that. So before I move on to the session, I also want to show you, I explain to you the free resources available globally and locally. So education is a great equalizer. If you study well, you don't need to pay and go to university or courses all the time. There are ways and means to learn online Free resources are available online. It's called MOOC, Massively Online Open Courses, right? So now these are available freely on the web. I have given you a few examples. Khan Academy, Coursera. In our own Sri Lanka, we have DP Digital University, DP Education, Mr. Damika Pereira, and lots of there are online resources of a university student. They do a lot of things. So lots of things that are available. I'll tell you how this Khan Academy started. This Salman Khan, the founder of, uh, not the film star, uh, in the US, he had a niece and niece wanted to learn something. So he was in another location. So he recorded whatever that niece wanted. And this recording, he sent it to the niece through email. Then he realized, oh, this is a good way to teach anybody. And that's how he started this online academy. And now it's a very popular global online open resource. So you upload programs on critical thinking, problem solving, creative thinking, analytical thinking, team working, leadership, computer programming, anything under the sun is available. You can freely, certain things are offered free, certain things you have to pay. Similarly, like that Coursera, all of that. So there are many Udemy, many things are there, free online courses offered by top class universities. So please visit these resources if you want to learn something. If you have a specialist understanding or you want to learn something, you have an interest and you are very interested or keen to learn something, then you can go into this without even paying anything, right? So understand what's around us. So all of us study these things because we want to find a job or start a business. If you are an entrepreneur, if you want to become an entrepreneur or a startup. So what do you, how do you get a job? For you to be employed, you have to be employable. You have to be employable. You have the ability to satisfy the prospective employer that you are capable enough to 
to do their job in the organization. So you need to have the knowledge, you need to have the skill, you need to have the attitude. And nowadays, a lot of the companies are more than skills and knowledge, they hire people for attitude. You may be the best, the most intelligent person who's very skilled, but if you have a lousy attitude, nobody will recruit you. So it's important if you want to get a job or if you want to be employable while you acquire knowledge and the skills like what you are learning today, you need to have the right attitude, have the right, right mindset. So that's very important when you're really, uh, you know, thinking about finding a job and just getting into the job after your studies. So I thought I'll just start off with that and then show you these are the most important future skills World Economic Forum have identified. The, these skills are now going away, declining. Things that we used to memorize and do, things that we used to do physically, you know, things we used to read and write and, you know, all that, you know, documented things that we do, you manage people, all of these things that we used to do in the past is going away. Now the future is the skills that are growing are these. Actually, this is some years ago that they said this. Now we are in 2022. These are some of the emerging skills, analytical thinking and innovation. That is what we are going to do today. How do we really critically think and ability to analytically look at things, problems, creatively solve problems, innovation. See, the another skill is critical thinking and analysis. See, these are new skills, future skills that is required now for the new world. Another is complex problem solving. World is becoming very complex now. Very complex world we are living in. Who thought we will have the pandemic, corona for the entire world? We never thought, no? We never expected. So, we, in time to come, we will have so many complex problems that we need to solve. So we need to understand. So we are learning the right skills now. So you should be happy that you are learning these skills that are required for the future. So that you become future ready. You can face the future very confidently when you know these things. So it's important that you need to understand this. And with that in mind, let's start. So let's understand. Now, to solve problems, you need to think. We use our brain to think. I hope you know our brain has two parts, right? You have the left brain and the right brain. Of course, nowadays, with the advancements, the scientists have identified and divided the brain into four parts. Top, left and right, bottom. What do we do with these two sides of the brain? Have you, have you heard this before? Do you really know that you have a right, left brain and a right brain when you're thinking about something? Yeah? Any idea what we do from the left brain? Any idea that we do, one thing that we do from the right brain. So normally, the left brain is where you start to critically look at analytical, analytical things. So if you want to solve a problem, of course, both sides are required, but mostly you use the, the, the left side of the brain, right? Left side of the brain. Because that is where we will start looking at Language ability, if you want to learn something, you use the left brain. You want to look at a complex problem and solve something and look at numbers, you look at the, I mean, you always use the left side of the brain. You need to analyze something, a problem, understand why these things are happening. You have to, your brain, left side of the brain starts to kick in, right? So these are broadly the basic things that we, uh, use from the left side of the brain.
So it's more mathematically oriented, right? So the, the number crunching, all of that, if you're good with numbers, they say you're a left brain person. So I'm an engineer actually. I did my engineering from Oratory University, but later on I moved to supply chain. I started uh, working at Unilever. So I, I, I can say I'm actually, there, there are tests that you can do to see whether you're a left brain person or a right brain person, right? You go to internet, you can see. But I, actually when I did that test, I am more in the middle. So I, I'm, I'm kind of a bad left and a right both because I'm also a bit creative. Right, so creative part of the brain is the right brain, right? So if you, are, if you want to express yourself, you are emotionally or dealing with other people, the relationship management, if you want to think about new ideas, if you are like an art, artist or musician or you know, somebody who can create things, you know, all of those people are more right brain, Pablo Picasso are kind of people are here. Most Einstein type of people are on this side, right? So this is how our brain works. So it is not that somebody say, okay, now I'm thinking of problem. Okay, let's switch the left brain. Okay, now I have to give solutions creatively, then I look at the right. No, it's not like that, it works. But these neurons will work with each other. At the right situation, it will come together, but some both jointly both sides of the brain will work together in, in giving the signal to you for the re required situation. So this is important thing that you need to understand. So when you want to make decisions, so the both sides of the brain will work. So the, like I mentioned to you earlier, the language, different languages, logical thinking, critical thinking. So the critical thinking comes into this side of the brain, left brain. You know, reasoning, why something is happening? Why this problem is happening? You know, you need to understand why, 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 why? Unless you understand critically why it is happening, you will need not be able to solve the problem. So it is important to understand that reasoning, why this is happening. So the brain will look at problems very critically, going deep into the problems, uh, logically saying, is it the reason? Logic, because of this, this is happening, therefore it is this happening like that. Reasoning is happening from the left brain. So right brain is more creative part of the brain where you express your emotion when you're sad, you cry, when you're happy, you, you're elated, you jump up and down, you can see from your face, you can easily recognize people, you identify somebody whom you um, uh, met many years ago or some schoolmate of yours. No, I, I sometimes don't recognize because I teach a lot of students. So sometimes I don't know where I have met the student. In the last uh, 10 years, I've been teaching a lot of students, like thousands and thousands of students. So I, I don't remember from where. So sometimes maybe it's difficult because brain has become cluttered, right? So if you want to create music, emotion, you know, identifying colors, because sometimes if your right brain has some defect or whatever, some problem, you, you can't differentiate colors. There are colorblind people. You know, some, some neuron is not working, you know? So, and very intuitive, you could feel, you, you know this is why this is the case with this person. You have creative ideas. So these are things that happens on both sides of the brain, which help you when both jointly work in your brain, it creates magic for us to solve problems, critically look at things. All of these things are what we are. Uh, you know, doing, right? So let's understand now. So to solve problems, we need to first think why this problem is happening. But very often, sometimes we don't think. We fail to think. If you don't think properly, if you carefully think properly, you will have lots of issues and we are, we are experience this, experiencing these things in our country. We are blindly doing things without 
observing things, without hearing things from the people, without hearing from the experts, without look and feel how the suffering people have. We, we fail to see these things from your, our left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. So therefore, we don't think in a logical manner. So there are many different types of thinking that human beings have, right? So forget about the names, so complex theory, but you know, just want to tell you how we think, different ways of thinking. Very often we do things without even being aware as a habit. You wake up in the morning, you just go to the bathroom and brush your teeth. Nobody tells you. As a kid, your parents will say, please go and wash the, brush your teeth. But you just do it. As you wake up, you just brush your teeth. You, you know, you just go to the bathroom. Or when you're driving a car or a bike, nobody has to say, now you turn like this. You know? Your brain works in a way without your knowledge. You stop at a red light. You just drive the car without meeting with an accident. You move to left and right or whatever where the direction that you want to move. So the things that you do, without being aware, I are called ritual things. Ritually you do things as a habit. There are certain things that we think in a random way. So day, we call it daydreaming. Sometimes we dream, okay, one fine day, I will drive a fantastic car and I'll be in a, another country. I'm going there and I'll have a big, big house or I will get married to this beautiful girl, whatever. So the daydreaming, spontaneously something I'm thinking about it. I'm imagining it. Those things are also thinking. But sometimes we also have appreciative thinking. When you see some uh, dress or shirt or trouser, you feel like, oh, I like that. Oh, I like this girl. I like this boy, right? Oh, I like this food. It so, looks very tasty. So, so you appreciatively think about it. And the fourth type of thinking is Critically thinking, these are like all surface kind of thing, okay? Very, very uh, emotionally kind of thinking. You know, you are looking at things, you just appreciate, you just daydream, you just do things as a habit. But this thinking is more deep than these three. You really, this thinking requires objective analysis, reasons why things are. You go deep into the problem, pay attention to detail. You know, observe like the, the animal picture that I wanted you to check. You critically look at not only the elephant and the <coughs> dog and the donkey, but there are lots of things that you couldn't see, but you objectively looked at it. You look deep into that. And then not only looking at it, you need to look at evidence. You know, just because somebody gives you something, you should not accept it. Now you see so many things in social media, people without blind, looking at even the validity of it, just share. Some majority of it fake news. But you just, or without objectively evaluating, share it. It must, must be damaging to somebody else. But we are not evaluating objectively and evidence, we are not looking at it. As much as possible, Critical thinking involves going deep into the uh, thinking or to, for a problem, analyzing it evidence, and with the evidence you say, oh, this is happening because these, these reasons, and finally you make a judgment or a decision, take a decision on that. So that is what critical thinking is. So I hope it's very clear. It's not something that you do it on the surface. You critically look at it. If you have a sickness, you just don't talk to somebody and ask, okay, I have this symptom, what do I do? Okay, some people do that also. But what you need to do is you need to go and see a doctor. Doctor hopefully will give you, look at you, and doctor with his years of experience as a doctor will ask you to either look at your symptoms and give medicine, or the doctor will ask you to do some tests. That's objective analysis. So he asked you to do tests and with the report, he will be able to, because if he's unable to tell you that this is just a standard sickness, 
he will ask you to do some tests so that he'll be in a better position to give you that is evidence evaluation to form a judgment similarly when you have a problem you need to look at that why that is happening what are the evidence available and then you make your judgment based on the knowledge and the skill that you have developed and you get a judgment out of it what do you really mean by critical thinking now theoretically what we learn as thinking styles are different and critical thinking is much more than that so what is it involved you have to be very curious if you are a critical thinker you have to be very curious you have to be very inquisitive you must know you must always want to learn you have to ask from people you must check the available information curiosity there is a saying no curiosity kills the cat but it is important to be curious unless you are curious you won't have all this objective evidence you have to be open minded just because somebody tells you you should not think that is the answer you have to be open there may be many answers to the problem there are many reasons for the problems so you have to be open minded if somebody says no you are wrong don't fight with him just think why start critically thinking whether there are any problems that you have with you the way you think or there may be other solutions to the problem which you haven't thought open minded very important you have to be open receptive to ideas other people's views respect other people's ideas you have to be very objective you can't just do things because somebody else asked you to do so now i don't know whether you are looking at these things these days lot of political videos and all that there are central bank uh, you know government ministers are interviewing uh, these government officials so some central bank officials are saying i said don't do it but three other people wanted to do it so i i just i was a minority you can't be like that you have to be objective if you think this is wrong you must say wrong just because i mean after all this is hard earned money of the public so i'm just saying in a, any whether it is in the government sector whether it is in the school whether it is in a society that you are part of whether it is in school, at home whether it's in your workplace whether it's in the university or any any training center that you are in if you feel that something is wrong you need to say so you have to be very objective why you are saying it's wrong or right so if you are a critical thinker you will be very objective oriented you will be highly objective you just don't work here say fact driven data driven you will have facts to say why you are saying that of course you have to be very reasonable as well you cannot say i know everything therefore you listen to me no you have to be reasonable you have to listen to others if you are a critical thinker not only you know everything you have to listen to other people you know we have two ears and one mouth why we have to listen more than talk more than you talk so listening will give you a lot of new understanding about how other people will think so it's important to understand this aspect right so you have to be reasonable if you are a critical thinker you have to be reflective in your thinking you have to really sit like you're sitting in front of a standing in front of a mirror you have to reflect and say why is it like this okay why did this person say like this okay i need to really look at that i need to revisit this idea i need to do this this way because this person gave me some suggestions with facts okay i had to really relook at this so you should be uh, uh you know what you call down to earth you should be able to uh, respect you should respect other people's views and reflective in thinking you have to re revisit reflect on on solutions problems so that you can get the best uh you know outcome 
and of course if you are a critical thinker you need to be analytical you need to really pay attention to detail you need to go deep into the problem why things are happening you need to have good understanding on uh, uh, you know uh, the reasons why problem solving ability analytically in a structured manner highly organized structured manner so these are some of the uh, the the critical thinking behaviors of a person so reflect on yourself and see do you have these attributes in yourself if you have majority of these skills in you then you become a critical thinker so a lot of the people think that when i when i do this session uh you know they all say critical thinking people are mostly engineers or some mathematicians no no it is not yes of course having that background will help but anyone can become a critical thinker as you, as long as you logically think about problems you don't need, need to be a mathematician you don't don't need to be a, a engineer you know need to be having a very high uh, data driven uh, Uh, mindset no of course those will help but anyone can develop critical thinking skills provided that you do these specific things that i mentioned in a very structured way are you clear so far and um, is the time okay for the break or i can do go for the amanda amanda okay then i'll move on till they alert me so so as what we learned now so far you have a problem to solve a problem we need to understand what this problem is all about clearly understand the problem because there are so many problems we can't solve all the problems when there are bigger problems you need to break it into small chunks so if you look at the current problem in the economy it's a huge problem but if you try to solve the economy problem as a whole it's not easy to do that but first of all you need to understand what are the biggest problem that we have we have these queues the fuel queues the gas queues and food whatever queues so you need to one by one say okay how do you solve the gas problem how do you solve the petroleum problem how do we solve this set so one by one when you do that little by little the rest of the problems also will be become east of so the problems have to be broken into small chunks but how do you do that you have to have a thinking critical thinking mindset to break into small problems some people think okay i will solve the problem and they will go and appoint a prime minister or a, uh, some uh, political party and say okay now the problem can be solved by this person no you need to have a system in place proper critical thinking for you to identify the problem so that's very important and then only you will be able to uh, get a solution for that so critical thinking is the ability to analyze information we need to objectively analyze information and based on the information in a structured manner we identify these are the reasons so this and therefore you make a judgment and then finally a decision on that so that is what you mean by critical thinking right so if you're trying to use critical thinking skills what are the things you need to do when solving the problems right you need to observe clearly it's very important to observe keep all your use all your senses you have to listen you have to use your ears properly wide li you know open the ear flaps clearly listen to everything that is happening observe clearly from your eyes smell if it's possible whatever that is happening around us sometimes the smells the, the observations all these senses together and also by talking of course talking will start after observing so all the senses must clearly be used first by observing when you observe clearly like the elephant picture that we dis discussed 
you will get to see a lot of things that you didn't see earlier. And then you have a lot of things that you have now observed. Now you need to analyze. You need to analyze using techniques, different techniques, which I will explain to you. How do you analyze a lot of things that you observe? Certain things are very complex. Certain things are very simple. Certain things are already answers are there. So how do we objectively look at? Sometimes you need some information to analyze that or tools to analyze that. So you need to look at all these aspects. So once you analyze all of that, you decide, okay, these are the reasons for this. So you make a judgment and conclude that finally for to make a decision. And then you need to, once you conclude it, then you need to properly communicate, right? So you're, then you start identifying the problem properly, define the problem so that you can use your critical thinking skills to have a problem to the solution to the problem, right? So this is what we need to do. So it's important for us uh, to understand what needs to be done when you're uh, uh, thinking critically. So let's move on to the first group session, breakout session. Identify any problem, simple problem identify so that it's easy. Agree, discuss what is the boundary of the problem. Because otherwise, if the problem is so big, it's very difficult to solve the problem. So identify a problem. How do, what are the techniques that you are using now? I haven't taught you the techniques, how to define and all of that. But in your understanding, let's identify a problem. There are so many problems around us. Maybe it can be something related to your generation or external or personal, professional, whatever. Identify a problem and clearly define that problem. Clearly identify the scope of the, uh, define the scope of the problem. Then we will see to proceed from there onwards. So this problem is the one that we will be using in the next few sessions because next session would be about identifying reasons, then identifying solutions. So we can use the same problem to continue in the next two uh, group sessions as well. So clearly mention the boundaries of the problem and define it clearly. Don't try to solve the world's hunger problem. It's not easy to solve. So identify some simple problem which is uh, not very complex so that you can break into small pieces. So the bigger problem can be solved, but first let's break into small chunks and let's solve the problem, okay? So now you have identified the problem. Uh, so I will not spend time on the debrief what the problem is. I hope all of you have still, nobody has uploaded. So please uh, type the problem. Uh, so I, if I, we had time, you would have discussed uh, the debrief session. So let's not uh, uh, spend time on that. So I'll, I'll just give another exercise, right? Very important. Now watch this picture carefully, right? Because we now need to start thinking, uh, you know, in a very critical manner. We need to start deep observations. We need to really look at attention to detail. Now in this picture, Tell me, what do you see? What do you see? What is this picture all about? A young lady also. See, I, I, I will show you. See, the old lady's chin is a very old, you know, haggard look. This is her scarf. But the young lady's hair is here. This is her face. So you look at this. This is her scarf. This is young lady's neck and the necklace. This is the old lady's face. So the young lady is here, this one. When you're looking at something, you need to have a very good deep observation. Don't jump into conclusion. Quite common. I also have done it. But it's important to observe, pay attention to detail. Very important. If you're joining an organization or if you want to submit your CV uh, to uh, get a job, companies want people who really understand the problem deeply to give solutions. 
Now, if you only see, I'm, I'm, I'm using this to reinforce a message in problem solving. But just imagine in an organization, you have a problem. You know, you have a breakdown in the machine and you don't properly inspect the machine to understand why this problem is happening. So therefore you can't produce the product. So if you, if you wrongly identify the reason because you haven't paid attention to detail, you really didn't observe the machine properly, you do some patch up and then this problem will again happen. It keeps coming, the product will get rejected. So the people will be very unhappy. So that is why you need to have a very sharp eye. You have to observe properly like an eagle. You have to be very, very sharp to observe the problem. Think very critically. Attention to detail, very important, right? So what, why I wanted to show you is the critical thinking. Now we learned about what critical thinking is. Analytical mind, open mind, inquisitive mind, creativity, all of that is good. But if you don't observe, the first step is the observation, properly observe. Then only once you observe, you can analyze the problem properly. Right? So you have to have a very good eye for detail. If you don't have a very good eye for detail, that is attention to, <clears throat> attention to detail, you will not be able to solve problems effectively. Understand, lesson number one, pay attention to detail if you want to be a good problem solver. Right, now, bit of theory, right? So we have problems. Problems are there to improve something, to design something to solve a problem or just do a little bit of refining or tweaking to improve something, refine and do something better. Or you can combine something together and you know solve a problem. That's what though, the government. Okay, we had a problem. So they got told of Ranil Vikramasinghe, they got told of few people from the existing party and few people from SLFPN, combined and made a government. So, I mean, that's how some people solve problems. So different people will solve problems differently. So, or you totally look at new things, invent. Problem solving can be that. So to do that, by looking at this problem, this problem is a very broad problem. When you say food shortage, food shortage is, it's like a bigger problem for the whole country. Can you solve it? Like that problem, politicians also can't solve the problem. So you need to pick a small part of the problem. You can't food meaning all the food. Are you going to solve all the food though? Or you get pick one part, one food item. So like that, you break it into small chunks. Otherwise, it's difficult to solve bigger problems. You have to break it into small chunks to solve because otherwise it's difficult to, it's like, you know, they say, you know, you keep all the oranges, this thing and one by one things will fall. But you keep it, what you can hold, then, you will not fall anything, drop anything. So it is important for you to understand a problem which is manageable to be to, to solve, right? Identify one thing, sugar problem, meat problem, whatever. Identify one item and see how to solve that problem because otherwise it's too big. So critical thinking side of the brain, that is the left side of the brain, you will analyze, you break down the problem, the, the problem that you identified, you first analyze whether the food shortage, okay, what is the food shortage? Which one are you going to look at? So you're breaking it down to small ones. So you are now saying, okay, I will look at the rice shortage, okay? And then you will look at how this is happening or you can list down all the reasons. You list down, okay, what are the sequence of things that are happening? Okay, it is happening because of this and this happens to this, this because of this because we didn't have the uh, uh, food uh, crisis. Rice, if you choose, we didn't, uh, we actually started with the organic thing and therefore we stopped uh, importing um, chemical fertilizer. So chemical fertilizers uh, didn't uh, come on time. 
So therefore, now we have come to the Yala season. That's the biggest season. 75 to 80% of the 60% or 70% of the crop is coming from the Yala season. So we have a big problem. So sequentially, we know and say, okay, this is the, the biggest reason why this problem is happening. This is the next uh, most uh, 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 important thing like that you can rank and identify the reasons for this particular problem. And on the creative side, what you will do is now you will, you know the reasons because you're analyzing. Now you need to creatively give solutions. Critical thinking will look at what are the reasons for the problem. Of course, when you're finding reasons also, you need to identify the, the, the creatively look at your brain to understand what are the possible things. But of course, it's mostly the left side of the brain. But the right side of the brain, you will critically, creatively identify, imagine and say, okay, what is it that I can do as a solution? How will I now uh, do something to solve this rice shortage? You know, what are the things you need to change now? The way you do things, can we do home gardening? Can we uh, quickly import something uh, uh, and then start uh, improve productivity in our, our uh, fields? How do we educate the farmers in a creative way? How you design new ways of doing to improve productivity in the, in the uh, fields? So like that, you creatively look at solutions. So because of the left and the right brain working together, you will solve the problems to improve or design or refine or combine or improve. So you need to have both these right brain and the left brain working together in order for you to give a solution. So it's important now we, we know the critical thinking uh, is the important part in solving problems, right? So we need to know where our thinking cap, right? Very often we fail to think, we forget to think. We keep our brain at home and go to class or school or whatever. Thinking is to switch off, you know, and come. So you, you just don't talk, just don't talk, just don't think. So obviously problems cannot be solved. So it's important to wear the thinking cap whenever that is required, right? Because critical thinking will help us to manage the time properly because very often what happens is if you don't understand the real problem, if you don't in a very organized manner, hurry at a step-by-step step, balala. If we don't solve the problem in a very structured manner, in a very organized manner, then you will take the whole day to do that. So that is why today we are trying to learn tools and techniques. There is a way to solve problems. There are tools available in the, uh, in the world to solve problems. Some are complex tools, some are simple tools, which you and I, school leavers can very easily, all of you can easily learn. Even anybody who doesn't understand, haven't gone to school even, simply some things can be easily understood. So let's understand today the simple techniques that we can understand. So that will then help us to manage our times properly because time is very precious, isn't it? Time cannot be recycled. We have a finite time. So it's time is so so precious for us. It's gold, right? So it's important for us to do that. And also critical thinking will help us to make the correct judgment. Now it's not like this. When you are driving the car, you know, you get a call. You don't, you know, stop the car and then try to answer the call. You just while calling, you see so many times people are just calling and you know doing everything while driving the car. This is what will happen within few seconds because you can't make a correct judgment, right? So critical thinking will help you to make the right judgment, you know, habitually, remember? You will know that this is not right. This is not what you should be doing. So you will, be able to make the correct judgment, right? Otherwise you will go and meet with an accident, right? And we will be able to easily assess the risk now. Earlier also, 
we saw okay when you are driving your attention will go away when you have to answer the phone the few seconds within split split seconds you will you know somebody can you know come and you know knock on you or you go and uh, knock on to somebody else from behind and it can be a life threatening and maybe on the people uh, who's on the road right so if let's say if you're working in a factory construction site now the people who are there will have to look at critically what can go wrong right the risk has to be assessed critical thinking will help you to understand what can go wrong so you know okay if you are working with heavy equipment people movement if happening then they, those equipment you can it's like on the road there can be collisions if they are lifting heavy things if you don't have a proper personal protective equipment your headgear uh, the the uh, helmets all of that safety shoes in a construction site if you don't wear that you will meet with accidents so then the workers will not come to work so then you can't run a factory or construction site so in an organization when you are working you need to understand what can go wrong critical thinking will help you to understand and assess those risks then you will be in a position to proactively not after something happens some accident happens before something happens you will be able to understand what can happen if this is not right what can go wrong if you don't follow this procedure if people don't wear helmet what will happen if they don't wear yellow safety uh, overcoat what will happen what if they don't wear safety shoes what if they don't have a proper license to drive these cranes and all of that so all of these things once you identify it's very easy for you to put corrective measures preventive measure mona hari varadi wenne monawada kiyala hoya gattata passe apita lesi ka hoya ganna meka wen prashnayak nowena vidiyata wada karanne kohomi kiyala how to prevent the problem how to prevent the problem how do you prevent the problem so it's easy to do that so assessing the risk will help you to do that right so it's important to understand that right so critical thinking will help you there so i'm just giving you a few examples and it will also help you to make the right choice let's say like person like me now i had to reduce few kilograms right so my dietitian if you want to reduce weight or you have to be healthy you need to have good nutritious diet right so you should stop on your sweets you must eat fresh fruits and reduce carbohydrates eva ke deval api karala hari thirana ganna now for that you need to you can't decide because you have so many things that you like to eat but you might have to go to a nutritionist and understand how much calories you take how much what is your lifestyle do you do exercises so they will tell you based on your lifestyle kohoma do age jeevana ratawa kiyala balala කියනවා ඔන්න මේ විදිහට තමයි කණ්ඩෝනි වෙච්චර ප්‍රමාණයයි කණ්ඩෝනි ඔයාලට පැණි රහ කන්නම බෑ you can't eat any sweets you do like this so you practice so then even when you see some sweets you will do the right thing so you make the right choices when you know critically what the if you have critical thinking skills you make the right choices but if you don't have the critical thinking skills you will make the wrong choices because you don't know and why are you doing all these things because you want to have a good career right you have to, you want to find a job you want to do well in life you want to start a business if you are kind of wanting to be an entrepreneur we may va karanda wa apply karana companies walta right so when you apply how do you write your cv to show that you have critical thinking skills problem solving skills it's important to market yourself so you need to now after listening to today's session you have to rewrite your cv to show that you have critical thinking skills if you have it 
because organizations look for people who can solve problems organization want people to think critically and give solutions that's why they will employ you to do that on your cv curriculum vitae you need to really show some problem solving situations that you have done so just because you say i have critical thinking they will not listen you have to write in a way that you did this you had this problem this is what you did so some examples you need to mention or when they call you for an interview you need to do that so that will help them to understand ah this person is really good he or she can solve problems in my company i can train her or him but i want this person to be taken into the company because he or she has a critical thinking ability can solve problems because organizations have problems all the time you need people with that positive attitude to solve problems so you will be more marketable you will be easily employable so these are things that is that will be able to do when you have critical thinking and problem solving skills now in the first group breakout session we all identify a problem now it's not like you know just that you have to go somewhere so then you see whether there is a there is money available for you to get into the bus there are buses there or then you have petrol in the vehicle whatever it's not like that in an organization problems are very complex even the problems that you have identified food food shortage power cuts right so those are complex problems plastic pollution polythene pollution big problems so these problems have to be properly defined using a technique and this technique is called 5w and 1h this is a way to properly define because one if you don't understand the problem then it is very difficult to define uh, sorry analyze and solve the problems the problem identification and definition is very important so when you are doing that you have to follow 5w and 1h what is this 5w what why where when who and how very simple right what why where when who how so if you answer to these 5w's and 1h then you can easily define and define what the problem is first of all you need to understand what is the problem right you have to identify and clarify and communicate the problem that needs to be so solved so what is the problem so you are saying i will just take one example polythene problem polythene pollution so polythene pollution where polythene pollution in the whole country so what problem has to be clearly identified then why is it a problem because that is also very important because just because you say polythene problem you don't know the length and the width of the breadth of the problem so you need to really in a structured manner clearly identify now japanese people are very good at solving problems that's why toyota production system lot of japanese companies are very perfect in quality they they are very organized all of that because they follow problem solving in a very structured manner so let's first understand the define and clarify and communicate the problem then why now identify and clarify and communicate why the problem should be addressed now why should we address the polythene problem reduce the environment pollution but you can also say why has many other parts it can go and block drains it can then uh, go to the ocean then it can so like that there are wise there are so many wise no so identify that because solving the environment problem is a broader one so you say that and say why environment meaning what because if it blocks the drain then it can leads to flooding so then next questions also can be understood easily right then you go and ask where this problem lies problem occurs 
so then you can say because you have understood the environment where the environment is you can say in the ocean on the beaches in the drains in the waste dumps you list out where this problem is because when you define the boundaries of the problem you can't solve the problem. Right? So you have to have an in-depth understanding on the problem. The more you know about the problem, easier for you to give solutions. Because you are not missing out anything. You may not miss anything. Now to identifying or identify all the the identify and gain an understanding of the problem for that you need to have the knowledge you need to have the knowledge that you need to know where to get information about the problem if you don't know plastic polythene problem where you have this you can do a google search then they will say maritime pollution uh, uh, waste dump problem like that you will see where what can that polythene do to the environment so you should know where to get information where the problem is so that you are in a better position to give solution and then you need to also identify and clarify and communicate when did this problem occur was it there from last year was it only a recent thing was it because of covid you have so many plastic because we everything is being packaged now because of uh, hygiene reasons so like that you need to identify because in an organization when you are solving a problem you need to know whether it is this year's problem last year's problem because when you are solving the problem then you know whether you improve the performance even you as a person you want to get uh, to the university therefore you want to get all A's at the exam or you want to get the Z score you know then you need to see last year how many people are taken what was the Z score now you need to know your performance last year or this year so that you know okay what is it that you need to do if you have failed first time okay second time what is it that you need to do like that you need to really understand the timing the less last year or this year so the timing is very important and then who who is also very important how the make out the one other karani very important identify clarify and communicate who should implement the solution to the problem because there should be owner for a problem otherwise it becomes nobody's way and there is a story you know anybody somebody nobody everybody thought somebody will do it finally nobody did it like that so there cannot be ball falling in a court where nobody is responsible for. You look at our politicians, you know, they're not responsible after doing something. They say, I don't know. I, I am not responsible. You can't be like that in an organization or you can you be for yourself like that? If for your actions, you're responsible for your actions. You can't blame your parents. You can't blame anybody else, society. Personally, if you really do, to the best of your ability, you can overcome all your problems. That's I strongly believe in. Your problems, you only can come out of it. Of course, there's an element of external things that will impact, but you need to understand that. So who should clarify? Who should implement the solution to the problem also must be identified. So plastic problem, who should solve the problem? General public? government they must put laws companies must be responsible so there are so many parties who are responsible for doing that you can't only blame the government general public you and me how many of us just throw plastic i don't do any throwing at home i have a compost at home i don't send any waste out i recycle my plastic i separate my garbage into three polka to separately glass separately polythene separately and i give it to the recyclers I said recycle paper. So I don't do that. So I'm responsible for my own action at home. 
So like that, you have to be accountable for your action. That is when you become a responsible citizen. You can't blame the others. Remember when you point a finger at somebody, three fingers are pointing towards you. So before you point a finger, you must inwardly look at yourself. So therefore responsibility you have to take because even this polythene problem, you all have a role to play, all of us. How many of you go to the shop carrying a recycle bag? I never carry a city city bag to any luggage. I always carry my ready bag, cloth bag. I have several cloth bags in my vehicle and in my handbag. Whenever I go, I refuse to accept city city bag. If I want to buy fish, I carry an ice cream box and I don't get a city city bag to put my fish. I put the fish into that. I take the meat into that. So like how I do it. So like that we all can prevent this plastic problem. So therefore who meaning solving the problem, you and I also have a role to play. Not only the government, not only the producer, not only the supplier, not only anybody else, it's us also. Then finally, how part of it? Now we, we identify what the problem is. Now we need to see how to solve, how this problem happened, that is the origin, then how should it be resolved? And how much will it cost to solve the problem? That's what's important to us, right? So how this problem happened, maybe because plastic cost, the polythene was cheap and a legislative company, country, didn't have the legislation. So city city bags were cheaper. There are four people, we, uh, all of them people used to use city city bag for everything. Now, therefore, company has to incur a huge cost. So we need to understand how much cost. And also now to remove that polythene and use something else as an alternative, how much will it cost? So I just gave an example. So when you are defining all of this, then you can clearly say one problem. So solving the plastic problem in the country or maybe in the beaches, maybe in, in, in you take a certain small segment of the plastic problem and define your problem clearly, taking all these definitions, the what, why, where, when, who, how, not just say quality problem. No, quality problem is what? What is it that you're going to solve? You need to clearly say you are going to reduce the polythene consumption in the country of so many million tons to so many million like that. So currently you are having whatever X min, uh, millions, now you want to reduce it to this because overnight it's not practical for you to say zero. So you will have a time plan. All of that has to be clearly identified. So, so when you are defining the problem, you need to identify all of that because this is a bit theoretical but this is a structured way to solve problems. This is what Japanese have identified how to solve problems in organizations. And I'm telling you this because I have used this in my uh, company, uh, former company in Unilever. Whenever we have a problem and when they, let's say in the sunlight line, there was a defect. So we look at and say, what is the problem? Okay, identify all of that. Or if there is a problem with our shampoo or whatever. So we, we look at this structured manner and identify how to define the problem. And then you set targets and say currently rejection is this. We have to reduce it up to this. So you have a target. So then you go and work towards solving the problem. Okay, so I'm sure you can use this methodology in future so that you can understand the problem very clearly. Now, when you're understanding the problem, you have to gather information. You have to gather information. So we have loads of information around us now. So the information must be very uh, obtained from credible sources. You can't just ask from somebody on the road and say, what is the reason for this problem? No. The information must come from reliable sources. It has to be accurate, very clear very precise to the problem. It has to be consistent. Whoever now, let's say in Sri Lanka, we have Department of Census and Statistics, right? So, or Central Bank. So there are agencies in the government. There are uh, private parties who has information who are actually credible and accurate 
and they provide consistent information. And it, is, it should be relevant to you and it should be reasonable because some things cannot be very sensationalized. So you need to, so it's very important when you're identifying problem, the information sources for the problem must be from credible sources and information must be clear, accurate and all of that. Because we see so much data around us, so much information in the social media age. You know, data, data, big data, you call it, you know, so much information. So you get immersed in data. I mean, your generation, you need this always with some device or the other. So we get carried away with this information. So you need to know the authenticity of information. See, they have done some research. Uh, I think Stanford University have done some research and they found out 82% of the young people think that what is in social media is correct. They are unable to differentiate between real news and the fake news because you believe. So they say the reason why that is the case is because the education system doesn't allow people to think critically. Now they are saying that in America, just imagine how we are in Sri Lanka because we are just that's how we are learning. That's how we are learning. So you don't think critically. You don't know the concepts. You don't know to challenge whether this is true or false. So therefore, we, we have the environment around us now has a lot of misinformation. So you should always fact check. You can check whether this is true. So don't just forward anything that you get to your phone. WhatsApp or whatever, TikTok or whatever that you get, Instagram or whatever that you use. Um, don't just, I'm not saying don't trust anything, but you have to be responsible in whatever you're gathering information. Because wrong information can be very damaging for problem solving and for an individual as for an organization also. Especially now these days, so much information, none day. And also, online when you work, you know, all of you know, those who are uh, IT savvy, Algorithms, search for computer, Facebook, social media, site, and the system algorithms improve. If you notice that the algorithms are constantly studying you as an individual and then it keeps bombarding you with information that you really like because you might think, ah, nee, this is what I like, I want to go and buy. So you sometimes irresponsibly try to do things without critically thinking. So it's very important in this social media space and online marketing, you know, when you buy online things, a lot of things you guys like to buy online, don't mindlessly go and buy it because you need to critically think, what does it do, what will it uh, you know, critically identify these things because technology advancement is so high now, they really study you, right? They really study you and there is, I don't know whether you all watch Netflix, a social dilemma movie, documentary, social media, how they really kill your creativity, how they really, you get addicted. It's like drugs, you get addicted to social media. You can't get out of it. So it's uh, it's it's that bad. There are, while there are good things as well as bad things. So if you don't have critical thinking mindset, you will get into a mess and you will not get the correct picture of the problem. So that's what I wanted to highlight. Blindly don't go and click on things and you know do that. Look at credible, information sources right then you can easily 
differentiate from the right from the wrong right so very important to understand very important because there is so much information around us our ability to differentiate between wrong from right right from wrong will help us to become good critical thinkers and solve problems in a meaningful manner so that is what is important to understand so i just gave you some tips on what critical thinking uh, can do and what is it that will help in order for us but there are also barriers to critical thinking which is again social media thing that i spoke about are also some things that we need to understand so what are the barriers what prevents you from thinking critically so like any other thing if you don't have an awareness you don't know how to think people fail to think no sometimes like zombies gal gedi vela inna kisima deyak hitanna danne hitanna api hitanna mole paavichi karanne paaya we need to start using our brains we must start using our brains because when you have lack of awareness we don't know what's happening around us it prevents you from thinking critically api hama dama patrayak hari balanna one online phone eken hari mokak hari tv eken news balanna one on nati dewal balanna nathuwa at least prayojana thiyana deyak tv eke balanna one monada loke wenne kiyala balanna and you have so much information on the internet now you must see what's happening around the world we need to know how that is going to impact your life then ogalan danna ada me loke me dawassala loku yuddhayak yana kohe deka wenni what is what is the biggest war that is happening in the world these days i just want to check your general knowledge this started in the month of february what is happening in the world i just want to check your awareness whether you can think critically have the ability to think critically which country is invaded by these days so ukraine was a russian federation country and they broke away many years ago so russia is invading ukraine hari so there are lots of issues because of the war for the global internationally they produce 40% of the internet global wheat production mulu loki siyata 40 piti piti tiringu piti hadanne ukraine russia wal itin then we are going to have a shortage in wheat flour piti nathi wenawa la globally loke hama da e wage goda dewal thima me shortage so i am saying you have to critically think and for to critically think you need to know what's happening around us if you don't have awareness of what's happening you can't you don't get this information into your problem solving mindset you can't critically think when you don't have awareness because you need information to think critically you know for you to understand why something is happening what is the impact where is it happening how can we what is how can we really look at that why is it happening all these things to have an understanding we must have an awareness so i suggest all of you please watch news at least watch news even our singhala tamil news also they give a international part otherwise you watch bbc cnn cable tv has all this information but at least the local news also has a international news component they keep showing this so please if you want to become a global citizen or you want to become somebody who's acceptable in the new world we live in you have to have awareness you need to have common sense you need to know what's happening around us so we need to also barriers to critical thinking is if you don't take decisions you have a very poor decision making mindset or you don't like to take decisions then obviously you don't take decisions means you are not able to identify why these things are happening and then what is the reason for that so you can't take and say this is the reason for this therefore i'm going to do this <coughs> so 
sometimes when you have don't have time when you don't manage your time you can't critically think because you want to quickly do it so when you quickly do it you miss out on things so if you don't have time also it, it prevents you from thinking critically so you have to start early you have to start thinking critically to manage that so i've spoken a lot now so i want you to again observe this picture right observe this picture and tell me what you see here it's a bit of a difficult one tell me what you see in this picture there is one thing you can clearly see part of something see this doesn't show the full picture this shows the part of the problem part of the picture so maybe because of that you can't see it clearly next slide when i go to that you will see what exactly at least tell me whether you could see now could you see now what it is what is it so you see now you can see see this side only we have shown so the cow is somewhere here the full picture is not there so sometimes why i'm showing this is the exercise is you may not have the full picture when you are solving a problem you will have part of the picture part of the problem will only know but you should have the ability to visualize the, the full picture because you have gathered knowledge information you are more aware so that is why it's important that you need to have the right awareness you have to the full uh, knowledge of what's happening you need to have the right skill level the right mindset look at things with an open mind so that you will be able to manage uh, and you know understand now we will quickly go into a area which is very important for us to understand how to solve problems using structured tools and techniques in a very structured manner some things may think we may uh, you may feel it's a bit too technical but just at least if you understand the concept will help you mukad meka jeevitha kale purama ogulan prayojana enwa if you really understand this and this is i have only picked the very basic ones there are complex problem solving tools i haven't given it to you because you all are the school leavers you all are very young but i know you in a level o level you all have done many things uh, you know so i am just giving you the gist of of these techniques tools and techniques so that you will understand so when you are solving a problem this is the problem solving loop how you will follow that first of all you need to identify the problem that's what we did in the session 1 and then you identify the information and see exploring the information and and you need to really look at the definition of the problem clearly and uh, and create a problem definition clearly like using the 5w and 1h technique that we used and then then you explore and see what are the possibilities what are the reasons and based on the reasons you select the the best whatever the most possible idea for the problem and then you will say try to implement the idea and see whether it is okay and it will address the problem you test it if it's okay you then see what is the results of that if that is okay you continue no problem but if you sometimes give the not so good solution half baked solution then obviously you will not receive the end result so so it's it's a closed loop thing so you need to make sure that your problems are solved in the structured manner and each stage there are techniques that you can use to make it a proper structured way to do that so there are many problem solving tools right the, i am just showing you here the basic ones the last two ones are a bit complicated but i am showing these two uh, uh, you will it's easy, very easy to understand so by using the problem solving tools you will be able to understand the reasons for the problems clearly in a very structured manner without missing out on anything so to solve a problem first you need to get together and brainstorm you storm your brain because your brain you have to critically shake it and see whether uh, you can get ideas for defining what the problem is so storming the brain and then you ask why five times you'll do an exercise you will understand and there is also an 80 20 rule which i explained to you again and then there is a technique called fishbone diagram 
and then you also have a creative way of doing that called mind mapping so so just i'll just explain to you briefly what these things are these two three things very easy to understand these things you might find it a bit difficult but let's slowly move on to understand that so brainstorming means if you now like what you did today all of you in your groups if you have a problem you get together you get together somebody is leading the brainstorming session okay somebody has a problem maybe your coordinator will say okay this is the problem and now we want to understand reasons for the problem so we allow each and every person to say why don't stop sometimes one person will talk 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 not to allow anybody else to talk so the rules of brainstorming is you go one round get everybody to say something if somebody doesn't have an idea just move on to the next person so you go like a round thing you know go round everybody and then get ideas and just either you note it on a computer or put it on a post it pad on the on the screen uh, on on a board so that you have everybody's ideas right so brainstorming should allow because somebody should be there to lead the brainstorming then so somebody who will be the rapporteur uh, and then you should work as a team because nobody is superior to the others so if you are the leader you need to make sure that there are people who will not say okay this is a stupid idea no no this is not okay you shall you can't humiliate anybody when you are brainstorm everybody's idea is valid that is the rule you must give everybody a fair chance to say something so the leaders must ensure everybody is taken along with them nobody drops off make sure everyone has a fair chance to air their view about this particular problem so that's the step number 1 in problem solving you need to first do the brainstorming get everybody's inputs for the problem right and then there's another technique now we need to understand why this problem happened now this technique was adopted by japanese right in any problem this toyota production toyota production company uh, taichi ono is the owner of the company uh, any problem they have in the production floor they all go to the production floor when there's a problem so what they do is when there's a problem they get together in a room and then they ask this why five times when you ask why five times you will end up finding the root cause to the problem so let's let's take an example then you will understand what i mean right let's say you are uh, you are coming to the um, the training center what is center and in the morning you come in a car or a bus or whatever let's say you come in the bike and you cross the red light and you cop caught you police car e allu oya ava mugada ratu light ka igno kala yanda giya dan balamu ai meka une giya meka prashna yanne dan owata waga license ekak tiya gatta hari now let's ask why why now that's a problem for you now you got caught to the cop because you violated the traffic rules in the country so that was your problem so you ran through a red light now let's understand we we'll ask the first why now why did you run through the uh, ran through the red light so you will say because you were late for the class right so then i will ask the next question why were you late for the class then you will say i woke up late then the third why is why did you wake up late then you will say i put an alarm but alarm didn't work then as i ask why did the alarm not work then you will say battery behala then i battery bash say final why i am saying i forgot to check the real reason is not because you ran through the red light you got caught because you didn't check the alarm clock and change the battery anna etana thamai root cause ek so now see when you ask why why five times if you just stopped at this you would have jumped into conclusion and found something else but if you go to the root cause 
you would now you would, if if you thought that reason is woke up late then next time you will wake up early kiyala nida ganna haba edat ekama wena mokada wa battery maru kollana because you didn't go into the real root cause so now this is how you find the real root cause so that you will not have that problem ever again that is how you find reasons for problems and then identify the root cause is it simple isn't it simple it's such a simple technique isn't it ask why why five times any problem this can be identified then you will end up with the answer so this is the same plus tool that you can use you don't need to learn anything mathematics or anything like that this is such a simple tool brainstorming is very simple five i analysis is very simple okay now a little bit getting complicated now the other tool is called 80 20 rule this guy is wilfred wilfred pareto right wilfred pareto is the guy he is an italian he is an economics and an engineer also a uh, political scientist also so in italy he did a study and he found out that 80% of the wealth is with 20% of the population you can see at asuwak වෙල්ත් එක තියෙන්නේ 100ට 20ක population එක. ලංකාවෙත් එහෙම නැහැ. ලංකාවේ නම් 100ට දසම ගානක තියෙනවා 100ට 100ම පොරකම් කරලා නේ ලංකාවේ. So like that. So so he found out 80% of the outcome is happening because of the 20% of the in, inputs. So therefore this particular thing can be used in anything you do. so now world over this is being used and this is called pareto principle or 80 20 rule so when you are finding a problem you can't look at all the possible reasons and say these are all reasons for this problem so if you apply 80 20 rule you will realize 80% of the problem or the results happen because of the 20% of the things so if you go and tackle the 20% your problem majority of the problem can be solved so therefore you when you are listing out your reasons you need to identify what is the majority or the 80% of the reasons for this particular problem and then you can prioritize so once you finish the first 80% then you go and find the next 80% next 80% like that you will do that so if you look at the 80% of the result happen because of the 20% of the effort so you need to understand that right so this will be able to prioritize your solutions and that is what this wilfred pareto informed us so this is another tool we can use in problem solving because not all problems are uh, reasons for that problem 80% of the problems are happening because of the 20% of of the uh, reasons so therefore go and solve the 20% of the reasons then you will be able to solve the problem okay now the fourth thing is called fish bone diagram now when you look at this it looks like a fish right and fish ke katu thiyenne mehema ni meda katta thiyena it was a chuti chuti katti katti so this technique was actually taught by the japanese again called ishikawa so he is a scientist so he actually looked at this and then he identified when you have a problem you put the problem here fish ke oluwa ekata heetu monawada kiyala api daana katu walata it was ekata heetu monawada kiyala onnam podi thawa kaya tikak dala prashne visadanna structure mane ekata karanna puluwa iting api balamu udaharanayak washayen mokak hari api paduwak ganna giya meka waradi vidiyata hai karala tiyena right incorrectly assemble parts so it would be a make hoyana kota technique ekhe reasons why kiyala ahana kota you can put under these headings then it will help you so is it because of the measurement issue is it because of the machine is it because of people or the man it's easy to identify when it is starting with m is it because of the method is it because of the material is it because of the mother nature there is another m actually which is missing here because of the environment 
So under these headings, you identify in the fish bone why this problem is happening. So let's say the same issue about uh, you getting copped at the red light, uh, traffic lights. This is the problem here. Then you check why. Is it because of a measurement issue? Is it because of machine issue? Is it because of man, person, that is you? Is it because of the method? Is it because of the material? So like that, when you do that, this is the primary reason. For this reason, when you ask what are the reasons, there can be secondary reason. Why this machine is breaking? Is because it is not properly fixed it. Okay, why people are not, have not uh, fixed it properly? Because there is an issue with training or there is an issue with communication. There is an issue with procedures, whatever. So you need to, uh, you can easily document all of this. So information is very easy clearly mentioned so you can easily identify the reasons. So I know this is a bit technical, but this is one technique called fishbone diagram. So one final one we need to learn before we close. The other one is called the mind mapping. See, when you do the, when you do a subject, you do short notes, no? something like that. This is very creative people do this. I'm not a, fully creative person, mind map can make different things in a creative way with pictures so that it's easy for you to visualize the problem. Right? The make a what a health crush near the reason like a health take a deal. Eka venabulanga nidaga nati. Sleep. Etogodia sleep kila dalap in two rakanda. Stress in the venabula. Even at tongue excise karanati in the venabula. Even at tongue water, kissima support takakna health, health, danaganami health take again. Emanatha, you have a problem with your diet. So like that, if you are a very creative person, you draw it like that. So it's easy on a piece of paper to see what the problem is. This is called mind mapping. You map the, the whole problem into a map uh, in your mind and map it and convert it to pictorially. So then Varana sleep like a head to so like that reasons stress water anxious Water Prashna, you know, at a Vibhagi at the Padankar and the office, a game and a boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever Prashna theme. Hurry. So, like that, you you know, are a, there are different, different, uh, you know, uh, parts here which will uh, help you to break the bigger problem into smaller areas and you will be able to visualize the problem in a better way. So, if you are a creative person, you can put pictures so that it's easy rather than just putting text only. So you can draw it. And now in the computer also you can draw this, uh, you know, computer mind mapping is also happening digitally now. So these are things that you can look at it. So this is only the complicated ones, these two. But see, I'm sure you got some idea on what this is. And I don't think I will have time to, uh, because we have to also uh, uh, close. So therefore uh, we have to understand uh, when you are solving a problem, Right. First of all, we need to first identify and define a problem, right? And once you define the problem, then you need to understand why this problem happening. Then therefore you need to identify the root causes to root causes identification. Uh, you need to follow these tools that I have explained to you. Then based on the tools, you also will come out with solutions. And you need to creatively think out of the box, like the exam, example that I spoke to you about the, the, the brick. How can you think out of the box, not only within a box, you just think outside. What are the creative new ways of finding solutions to the problem? And you need to, if we had time, you would have discussed in groups the solutions for identified problem. So I, I expect you to in, individually or maybe if you have time, discuss solutions to the problem. Following those diagrams, tools that I explained to you, 
so when you follow all that in a structured manner, you will be able to manage uh, the whole problem in a more meaningful manner with that. So I just want to a few more slides of bit of advice to you. Just read this. A bar of iron costs $5. Made into horseshoes, right? So you this bar, you know, costs $5, but you can make horseshoes for this. So ठीक कीट वड़ा वाल वैल्यूबल मेड इनटू बैलेंस स्प्रिंग्स ऑफ वॉचर्स इट इज वर्थ थ्री हंड्रेड थाउजेंड मुखाद में एक आप रखिए ना मैसेज योर वैल्यू इज डिटरमाइंड बाय व्हाट यू आर एबल टू मेक ऑफ योरसेल्फ ऑल ऑफ यू आर यूनिक इन योर ओन वे बट इफ यू डोंट मेक एक इनके ने मोले पाव and the drive to do well in your life so it is only you can make the difference to yourself not anybody else so you can become a very successful person by acquiring all these skills critical thinking problem solving acquiring leadership skill you are doing series of programs as part of this to become a better version of yourself how do you present yourself how do you develop a personal brand all of that you have been learning so the value is determined by what you do so if you want you can be only a bar of iron man it will not cost that much you can't make money but if you want to add more value to yourself by learning new things uh, you know trying to develop a better understanding i told you about the new online resources available you know try to do things differently talk, talk to people who have achieved uh we uh, achieve success in their lives share with them have a mentor learn from others watch uh, news understand what's happening around us so with all that you become a better version of yourself right so it's important it's only you can make a difference to you not anybody else so 90% of the things if you do for yourself you can do 10% only is outside of your control 90% of the things if you do it you can be a better version of yourself so don't try to think that okay government is not right so political parties are not doing anything my neighbor is not right my parents are my friends are like this don't blame anybody else but yourself if you want to be a better version of yourself do that so you have to practice 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 in whatever you do all these famous people michael jordan uh you know all these apple ceo all of these people the doctors who you know really do so many op operations and all of that this person malcolm gladwell who wrote this book the story of success they, he has written so many stories about successful people so he says if you want to be a expert or a world class person you have to practice 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 he says at least 10000 hours you need to practice then only you become an expert or become a really a great person so please don't think success can happen overnight all those people have who have become successful in their lives are people who have really you know really worked hard really uh, you know you know they didn't i mean you, not everybody has to go to university i mean he's a school uh, university dropout i mean whatever you do i'm saying you can make a difference to yourself if you are focused if you are passionate if you really practice whatever then you become an expert so my advice to you is don't ever doubt yourself don't ever doubt yourself no one can destroy iron but its own rust so it's like that so no one can destroy you without your permission so if you are weak 
then you will fall into that so please if you are strong if you are bold enough no one can destroy you as a person because you are a strong personality so it's up to you to make a difference to yourself i keep saying this and i never look at other people and run my race i always try to be a better version of myself than yesterday so then there is less pressure because you are competing only with yourself not with anybody else tamang tamang ekka compete karanne ara age aluwath ekka alamu gedara ekkenath ekka age lanayath ekka anant ekkenath ekka don't try to compete with anybody else it's good to know what's happening to benchmark but please com- compete with yourself that is why you should learn these new skills the future uh, ready skills like these critical thinking analytical thinking leadership all of these skills because our attitude impacts our outcome right so whatever the skills and knowledge you have if you don't have the right attitude and the mindset you will never succeed so again this is a study that has been done with olympic athletes okay the athletes lata hari eda practice karanna one e golang ekak study ekak karala tibuna amerikave e golam balala tibuna e golange samahara athletes la hari successful some athletes la successful ne idu e golam baluwa research ekin hoya gatta attitude ekak bohoma wedagath wenawa e golange final outcome ekak kiyala mokada api godak kelata danna api den guna <coughs> excuse me then on social media value of negative mane rate yara kai me kai bana bana inwa but nobody is trying to now show anything to improve it okay politicians are politicians there are things that we can do within our control i saw a post by somebody tv ekak dammoth apita hem welema penni polling polling pawa dawa tv station ekak penna nawada ne gas walin goda enna ara aluten lassan de lip padapu kattiya ियोसाइटी if we don't change we can't make a difference to the society so if individually all of us don't change that you would and say we can do it hame velema i won't i can't i don't know how to do it i all that negative natwa if we can become positive i think i can do that i can do it i will do it kila positively hitapu gaman metana inna kena dongala udata wage illa chances of you becoming a successful person becomes much higher so that has been proven through research with athletes it's the the, the real truth i have personal experience on this if you think you can't you will never be able to achieve anything if you think you can it is possible because your the brain the neurons the positive energy that you have will always lift you up not put you down your energy is not getting drained ඉතින් අපේ ඇඟ හැම වෙලේම පොසිටිව් ගැන හිතන්න පුරුදු වෙන්න මේ නෙගටිව් තික් බට ඒවා අපිට කරන්න බැරි දේවල් තියෙනවා අපි සීල 90ක් අපිට කරන්න පුළුවන් දේවල් තියෙනවා සීල 10ක් අපිට බැරි කරන්න පොලිමේන් නැතුව අපි කරමු කිසි දෙයක් මම කිව්වේ එක්සැම්පල් එකක් හැරි අපේ gedara සෝලා අපි පාවිච්චි කරනවා ඉතින් අපිට පව කට්ටලින් ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ අපේ කුණු කාගෙන්වත් කුණු කාරය ආවේ නැහැ කියලා ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ අපේ gedara අපි කම්පෝස්ට් හදලා තියෙනවා තල වලට දාගන්න පුළුවන් ඒ වගේ අපි මට ප්ලාස්ටික් බෑග් නැහැ කියලා මට ප්‍රශ්නය නැහැ මම රෙදි බෑග් එකක් මා හෑන්ඩ් බෑග් එකේ හැම වෙලේම දාගෙන යනවා ඒ වගේ අපිට කරන්න පුළුවන් දේවල් තියෙනවා why can't we do that අපේ gedara වත්තේ අපි පුළුවන් ඉදිරි පොඩි පර්චස් ගානේ අපි හදලා තියෙනවා එළවලු පලා ඉතින් කොහොම කන්න බෑ නමුත් පුළුවන් ඉදිරියට හදනවා හදිසියේ ප්‍රශ්නයක් ආවොත් අපි ආව තියෙනවා so like that why can't we have an attitude and a mindset that we can do it and we can be self sufficient in our own little small pot plot of land that we have by critically thinking to solve problems and that's all that we need to do so with that we are 12:30 we will quickly see this video and then uh, ask stuff for questions right so watch this video very carefully really we need to really look at a change in the way we look at things watch this video so are you ready now are you ready to change so that concludes my session so let's start the q and a i hope the last video really energized you because we have to be like eagles not like kaputas okay 
<laughs> let's be eagles right so we talk so much about kaputas just divert our attention on kaputas and let's move become a legal because if you want to change we need to change ourselves first and we can just fly high above the clouds right so that you can really go on another journey when everybody is just talking negative things you know you can really become a beacon of hope for yourself and for the society and and and, and for the next generation so that concludes my part of it i hope you have identified ways and means to solve problems and i hope you'll switch on your critical thinking part of your brain uh, all the time now so that you as the next generation of our country will solve the problems that we are at hand in your own little way in your own little space sure so sure. um you were talking about the different strategies ma'am towards problem solving uh, brainstorming five eyes 80 20 rule fishbone diagram i was curious to know ma'am which one do you utilize the most and um, why no i think it it depends on the complexity of the problem but i think the easiest thing is five eye because very easy for anybody to use no i mean because there is a structured in an organizational context if you are working in an organization and if you have a problem there is a structured way to solve it you know first you need to look at the, uh, defining the problem right so when you are defining the problem you cannot just just blindly do that you must use the 5w and 1h method to define the problem and you need to have a one page there is a japanese technique called in one page you have to list, list all the problem information right mm -hmm. so it's called a3 page so once you define all of that then now you start solving the problem so then you need to check why this problem happening so the immediately what you need to use is the why why problem why why five times is the very easiest thing for day to day life and all that 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 mostly that you use so that is that and and also then you need to do a prioritization of your solve problems right so answers to the problem you need to prioritize because if you have a 100 issues for the problem not all 100 can be solved no it's literally impossible mm -hmm. so you need to see the most common reasons 80% contributing reasons for this particular problem so then you use the 80 20 rule right and uh, and then fishbone and mind mapping i don't do much but very creative people use mind mapping mind mapping is a very um, creative uh, people do that a lot so i don't have that much of a very very creative bent in my uh, uh, this thing but but uh, i mostly use uh, fishbone but very easy thing for for school leavers like uh, this group they can actually use 5y which is very very simple mm -hmm. uh, 5y and also to uh, identify the reason for the problem they can use a fishbone diagram so those are the two things that they can easily use which will help to a great extent but if you are in an organizational context in a very structured manner using ppm and tpm tools and all of that japanese techniques mm -hmm. total production system then you have a different ball game with lot of mm -hmm. information all of that uh, tools many other complex tools statistical tools are available for this kind of a group uh, where they are just starting Uh, to learn solving problem 5y is the most commonly one used one that can be used yeah i hope thank I you ma'am yes ma'am thank you so much